my office hours. Today we're going to talk about the difference between absolute and comparative advantage. On the board behind me, I've got the output or potential for both Homer and Marge in doing two tasks, shoveling the driveway or washing the dishes. Now if you look carefully at the data, you'll see that Marge has exactly the same production capacity on shoveling the driveway as Homer does. Their maximum is eight in each case. But Marge is substantially better at washing dishes than Homer is. That would lead one to normally conclude that Marge has an absolute advantage in the production process. She's at least as good at Homer at shoveling the driveway, and she's substantially better at washing the dishes. One might be tempted to think that Marge should just do all of the work herself, which is, of course, what usually happens on The Simpsons. But despite what you might think here, I would like to prove to you the comparative advantage that is allowing Homer and Marge to specialize in what they're relatively good at will actually save them both time and they'll get done with these chores a little bit sooner. Let's see how this works. In order to do that, what we've got to do is determine who's the low opportunity cost producer of each activity. Let's start with shoveling the driveway. If Homer goes out, and decides to shovel the driveway twice, then he would give up the opportunity to wash the dishes twice. If Marge were to shovel the driveway twice, she gives up the opportunity to wash the dishes six times. This is where the notion of opportunity cost comes in. Since Homer only gives up washing the dishes twice, and Marge would give up washing the dishes six times, Homer is the low opportunity cost producer in this case, and we want Homer to shovel the driveway because he gives up the fewest dishes. I'm going to go ahead and circle that right here. That's what Homer should be doing. And of course, if Homer is specializing in shoveling the driveways, well, we'd want Marge to be the one who washes the dishes. And in case you're wondering why that has to be the case, just note that Marge is very much better at washing the dishes than Homer is. In fact, 24 is three times greater than eight. So that's her comparative advantage. Having established then that Marge should wash the dishes and Homer should shovel the driveway, let's think about how much they could produce. So with comparative advantage, their joint production would be Homer just does the driveways and Marge just washes the dishes. So we get eight driveways and 24 dishwashers. Now let's compare their output if they didn't specialize. And they basically just decided to both jointly work on the production separately. In order to get at this idea, what we need to do is not think of Homer as choosing only to shovel the driveways, but instead to divide his time equally among the two tasks. So what we're going to do is we'll say Homer spends half his time on the driveway and half his time on the dishes, and Marge would then spend half her time on the driveway and half her time on the dishes. So this is without then the advantage of comparative advantage. Let's see how they do just uh, working on their own. What you get is four driveways from Homer plus four driveways from Marge plus four dishwashings from Homer and 12 dishwashings from Marge. Adding that up, the four and the four is still the same thing as before. We get eight driveways, but the four and the 12 makes 16 dishwashings. And so this is the beauty of comparative advantage. Under comparative advantage, the combined output here is 8 and 24. When they work on their own and do not attempt to benefit from the idea of comparative advantage, their joint production is less. So this is the idea that's important to think about, and this is why comparative advantage can save them both time, uh, because if they specialize, they'll get eight more dishwashings done in the same amount of time um, as they would have gotten eight and 16 dishwashings done 
working on their own, that time savings is something they can put to good use, presumably doing something a little bit more fun than shoveling the driveway or washing the dishes. I hope this lesson has helped to explain this idea. Have a good day.